Hi everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. Welcome to VA Dundee. My name is Nicole Keane and I'm the creative programmer here. Um, welcome to the talk. Sorry for the slight delay. Um, we had a slight issue with our um, live closed caption um, person coming online. Hopefully they will have joined us by now. Um, welcome to the talk. Uh, we've got a wonderful speaker. We've got April from Lafatiche and we've got um, Vari Maxwell, who's one of the curators here. Um, I'm going to pass over to them in a moment, but just in case uh, you're wondering how to work with the closed caption, if you look at the bottom of the screen, there is a small box that says closed caption. If you select that, it should be available and on. Um, and then for the BSL, uh, for the call being live interpreted into BSL, um, you can pin the BSL interpreter who is switching halfway through the event. Or if you select Gallery View, you should be able to see everyone. Um, so I will just invite Vari and April to join us by turning their video and sound on. They should be with us any second. That's Vari right there. If she wants to just turn her sound on. Hi there. Hi. And April again, if you want to just turn your mic on. Should just be a little, I can unmute you. There you go. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Wonderful. Yeah, I can hear everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so I am just going to turn my video off and hand over to the wonderful speakers for the day. Julie will remain on the call interpreting, live CC is available and I will hand over. Enjoy the talk. Great. Thank you so much, Nicole. Um, Thank you. And this is, I'm just going to say, this is a first, I think, for, well, it's certainly a first for me. I'm not sure if it's a first for you, April. But um, yes, <laughs> so so bear with us. But I'm, I'm really looking forward to today, and I've been looking forward to this for for a while. Um, so behind me, I'm sat in Mary Kwan in the exhibition, and April's in her uh, wonderful studio. And we're gonna have um, we're gonna carry on some conversations that actually we've we've had. Um, well, I first met April back in January in 2020, earlier this year. Um, and I had the chance to visit her fab studio and um, her eclectic, vibrant studio in the Tron um, in the heart of Glasgow's art scene. Um, and we were, I went to meet her to film an interview for our Mary Kwan exhibition, um, which is currently on show here at V&A Dundee. Um, and I think we had originally planned that the interview would last about half an hour, 45 minutes, but it went on for a few hours. Um, and still we realized there was more to talk about. So here we are today. I'm really excited to have the opportunity to continue this um, conversation. Her studio is um, packed full. When I walked in, it was packed full of boxes, stacked high um, with goodies inside. And on the side were stickers with names like Patty, Bowie, um, Magoo, I think, and then um, Freddie and things like that. And then there, there was also, as you can see behind April, some fab and um, neon colored knits and textures and gorgeous trenches. And then also around her studio were wonderful works of art and gallery catalogs. And um, so it's really interesting um, to think about how art and fashion really inspires April's work um, as part of La Fetiche. So April Crichton started La Fetiche with her partner in crime, Aurélie Forestier, based in France um, in 2017, I believe. So That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Still yeah. quite a young and um, vibrant yeah. and contemporary brand. Um, yeah, indeed. And today, yeah, I just hope that we can talk about, yeah, art and fashion, the brand La Fetiche, your DIY kind of punk ethos, um, mm -hmm. which is so maybe. Um, but yes, let's launch in. So that's what I hope um, we will cover. So there's a lot to talk about. Um, but first, I'm going to ask you, April, yeah. um, what, mm -hmm. what drew you to work in fashion? And, and what's the story so far for you? Well, I mean, I've always adored fashion, drawing, art. And it's always been a huge passion of mine, as it is the case with my partner, who's uh, based in Paris, uh, Aurélie. And we've always adored drawing. And I just, I think, just dressing up and having having a bit of fun, you know. I think uh, all good things come from instinctive feelings like that. And um, if you're lucky enough to find something you're passionate about in, in life, it, it it drives everything. It's a, it's a great uh, uh, force to be reckoned with. So, yeah, it's drawing and, um, I don't know, I've always enjoyed 
going to charity shops and you know <laughs> buying rubbish things and and dressing up and um, listening to music and everything working together and a way of expressing oneself and it's always been I think a very British thing to do that I mean um, my partner I think would say the same thing in France but just yeah dressing up and and having fun and um, it's uh, it's it's a very important thing to you I think growing up you know during those formative teenage years and um, it's always been something I've been fascinated with and um, and been lucky enough to continue with it in my it's- career. I, I think that's really a nice connection to to Mary as well, and her the look and her youth, um, kind of her how she lived the lifestyle herself, and um, clothes yeah. as a tool for self expression, which yeah. I know you've you've said about La yeah. Um yeah. So I guess what does Mary Quan mean to you in terms of that? I mean, I've always adored her spirit and her world and universe. It's always been incredibly inspiring. I think it's just that um, that real energy and sense of vibrancy and just and you know it just was such a wonderful period. I would personally have loved to have experienced mm-hmm. firsthand and the shops and you know the, the going into her store must have been so exciting for for, for young people at that period. You know and seeing all the colour and um, new ideas and innovative things, things you'd never really considered before. It must have been sort of mind, literally mind blowing. Mm-hmm. You know. So that, uh, I think, photographically, graphically, uh, the way she used colour, um, the way she dressed, very, very personal thing to uh, Orly and myself. It really is, that freedom of expression is so key to everything and tapping into that, finding out what you want to say and how you want to dress and be and feel, you know, I think is a really important thing. Yeah, and it's part of that kind of lifestyle and um, like you're living it yourself. Yes. Like, it, it, yes. Behind me, I have literally that mannequin is actually one of Mary's own. She wore that to meet the Queen. Um, yeah. Sorry, it's a bit blurry behind me, but yeah, you're you're wearing a, a wonderful um, uh, Lafetiche jumper right now. Yeah. But it's, it's about personality and individuality and expre- self-expression in, in those. Yes, I can see the connections. Um, yeah, I think absolutely. I mean, that dress behind you is, I think, one of my favourite dresses <laughs> the exhibition. And um, she just looks so wonderfully herself in it. And I think that's what we can all hope to achieve is to, you know, feel oneself, you know. And I think I personally, it's obviously it's a personal point of view, but it is through clothing. I feel I can be a better person. I can just be myself, really. So it's, it's funny, isn't it? Sometimes if you put something on, you don't feel right. You just mm. have a bit of a rubbish day. I don't know. Yeah, but no, it can it, certainly it change your mood. I think it does. Some people feel like that a fickle thing, but I think it's, mm. it's um, I, I just, yeah, arming oneself and feeling either you're in the right sort of mm. frame of mind is is quite an important thing, I think, yeah. As, and you know. so in terms of the kind of muses, those names on the sides of the boxes and, and how you yeah. name your garments as well, um, so yes. are you trying to capture kind of a spirit of their personality as well? Yes, or I think Aurelie about- and I have adored always looking at um, books. Um, we're really, we love, you know, rummaging through from these fantastic, you know, Flea markets, bookshops you get in Paris, you know, particularly there, they, they, they are great. You can find all sorts of odd, you know, fantastic photography, um, you know, interiors, whatever. Yeah, these sort of fantasy lifestyles and people mm-hmm. that inspired you and you know, inspire you to create clothing. And um, yeah, so it's a bit of fun, really, you know. I mean, yeah, uh, Patti Smith, oh, those images of her. Mm-hmm. Taken by Robert Mapplethorpe, it's mm-hmm. just you know in, in New York in those fantastic her apartment. They have nothing. She's wearing that mm-hmm. uh, sailor top, striped mm-hmm. uh, matelo top. I love that. I've always mm-hmm. loved that. You know, so we did our version with a hand knitter. Mm-hmm. So it's taking those iconic images and thoughts and feelings and making it something else. You know, so mm-hmm. um, so it was hand knitted and we made we sort of patched it with. Uh, a plain back rib and then sort of put coloured gussets under the arms and things like that. But but yeah, that was the starting point. Yeah, that mm-hmm. sort of connection to that image and 
heard be so cool and oh. effortless and you know so it was just a little bit of oh envy <laughs> you know let's 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 tap into that Oh my gosh, yeah. Image. I I think and yeah, I I think it's super fun as well. And yeah, Patty, she's one of my heroines. I've seen her three times. <laughs> oh yeah, but, but yeah, absolutely wonderful. Yeah, it's wonderfully inspiring. But yeah. in terms of um, kind of segue, you've mentioned other influences as well. So the architecture and um, design yeah. and the music as well, but. But the artist, I have a PowerPoint and we can, um, I can try and share my screen and we can flick through some images. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm going to do that now. Um, but um, yeah, I'm really interested. So your studio, it's centered, as I mentioned, in, in kind of the heart of Glasgow's kind yes. of art, art scene. And um, you're, you've got neighbours um, who yeah. are you know famous artists um next door um sharing cups of tea in the tea uh, <laughs> um yeah. uh, in between um creativity so it would be really um nice to kind of um talk a bit more about how art meets fashion um yeah and I, your I mean, approach as La Fetiche. yeah we're very lucky in Glasgow it's such a great community here you know I think this is what I love about this city um also in France, but for from Paris, but for a different reason. But yeah. in um, Glasgow, in particular, we're very uh, got a great clo close knit sort of bunch of people, and we all yeah. really get on well, and and we've all been very you know great friends for for years, and and it's now wonderful. Obviously, I I don't know if many people know, but I travelled to Paris for a great many years working mm -hmm. for different companies and always took me out of the city to work somewhere else. So it's really fabulous to be able to work and create in the heart of Scotland and, um, you know, a country really do, you know, love and that we can be creative within it in its truest sense, you know, in a nice sort of, um, I mean, I talk about this as DIY ethos, but think doing things that feel natural and very instinctive, you know, mm -hmm. and I think it's great to be able to work with your friends, you know, and they, mm -hmm. they are, um, there's lots of musicians here, um, uh, artists, of course, that we are lucky enough to share a studio next to. And, and, and I think they're curious about what we do as well, you know, um, creating clothes is a bit different to, you know, creating fabulous works of art, and I wouldn't liken it at all to, to the same craft. But it's uh, it, we're curious about each other's work, and and it's it's just for me, it's all the same context, really. It's the same world. It's not different. You know, yeah. it's just yeah. we all influence each other, and I think that's uh, always been a very natural thing for us. Yeah, um, I mean, so, yeah. So here we just see a picture. Mm -hmm. of, it's this is a great. Um, it was Jeremy Della's fabulous banner he did uh, for his um, his piece of work, and I just really loved the the message in it, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was at a time where uh, we just felt that 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 connection to sort of well, I'm this is the way I interpret it, but but just just to being sort of more generous and having openness and space in which to sort of think about things. And um, my um, talk about a huge number of things in fashion that have. Um, the, the reason why we created La Fetiche was to have time and space in which to think about things a little bit more and to right. edit and to take time to create things. And, and I just think this idea of, is, of space and um, mm -hmm. quietness and stillness for me, this is how I'm <laughs> again interpreting it, but is a really lovely, lovely sensibility. And I think having this handmade banner within the space of clothing and beautiful objects was just I think it should be hopefully it's inspiring and and makes people think about uh, uh, our, our work in a, in, a, in a kind of particular way and I think it's what we've always tried to do in this this is a showroom here that we had in Paris during our autumn winter 19 collection was to is to contextualize the the, the clothes so it's not just clothing and product it's 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 about emotion something's emotionally connected to these clothes um uh, i mean we all every uh, manufacturer we work with every artisan yarn the fabric all has a real story to it and it's 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 not just picked up because of price or it's it's you know it's 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 accessible it's it's got a real reason for being there i think yeah. that's really important in these times to 
to make that uh, c- c- communicate that and to, mm-hmm. to to share the love of that. You know, I think that's really important. Oh no, absolutely. And I think walking in, it, almost like walking into your studio, but I'm sure in these installations, um, it, it's it's um, it, well, when I walk into a gallery, it's always that place of encounter um, and yeah. imagination and kind of um, really appreciating the creative endeavor and, and seeing your clothes in that light, I think is really wonderful um, and, and really, yeah, really helps um, uh, understand those in- interconnections between art and fashion. Um, yeah. But also, I remember when we first met as well, you mentioned another muse of yours, um, I hope it's okay to mention, um, Rudi Gernreich, but yeah. also how you work also with, um, I'll just skip through a few, because um, you work with quite a few different artists. Well, this um, this beautiful clothes rail here was created by uh, Martin Boyce, yeah. um, who is um, been, he's been fantastically generous with his uh, time. Yeah. Um, and uh, these were, well, we obviously, we, we work right next door to him in our studio, and he's a great friend of ours. Mm-hmm. And um, right. he had these wonderful stand pieces that were, uh, which are the central sort of structure of the closed rail, um, were inspired by um, Jean Prouvé piece. Ah, and okay. uh, we sort of created these stands um, that we could display the clothes on, and they've got little holes at the top so you can arrange the clothes. Yeah, in a nice spaced uh, environment, um, and I just think the the the, the colour sitting against all the different textures of the of the clothing is is just a really beautiful um, thing. Yeah, yeah it's very pleasing. And, and also with Martin Voice, I I really love his work. Um, but I suppose you both share um, a, a fascination with with uh, kind of brutalist architecture. If it's or I'm thinking of. Yeah. The, when architecture, to... yeah, architecture, the way one feels in a space. I mean, I'm, yeah. um, this is a piece of his, um, that he very kindly let us hang a coat on. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, it's a so... bench, one of those beautiful benches you get in Paris, and it's in terms of this fabulous yeah. sculpture. So the appreciation of materials and, and design, mm. des- design as well, you know. Absolutely. Uh, it turned into a, a beautiful um, M- Making you rethink kind of form and function. Um, yes. And yes. maybe again, your work with, um, I guess, Sue um, and, and oh yes, Tompkins. Haley, Haley, and Sue Tompkins. Now they're, they're twin sisters and just such wonderful uh, friends. And they have uh, collaborated with us um, for autumn winter eight, uh, eighteen. Mm-hmm. And here are some chairs of theirs that uh, we love to bring in our showroom spaces. And they paint on uh, fairly humble shapes. Yeah. That they and um, it just makes it such a beautiful object. You know, they're so gorgeous. You know, I really love the colour and the, the, there's glitter on them as well. <laughs> um, it just sits beautifully with the, the, yeah. With the clothing. Yeah. And I think it just makes it kind of familiar, a bit unfamiliar or a bit um, surprising um, and unexpected. And I think and that's what is you know. similar with our, you know, obviously yeah. this is all quite subconsciously mm-hmm. driven, but the... Feelings that, and also to, to sort of liken it to quant, really, is yeah. if I can. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> but uh, the I what I love about her work, and I think mm-hmm. I'm trying to achieve with uh, mm-hmm. both Orly and I with La Fetiche, is uh, this sort of sense of joyfulness and yeah. practicality as well. You know, things yeah. that are everyday, things you can wear, but a little bit different, that make you feel good, yeah. um, but, you know, are a little bit out of the ordinary. Um but they, they work, you know, and, and women, uh, men, anybody, any age can wear them. You know, they've got um, yeah. something that's uh, very uh, friendly about them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, which and is hard, I think, these days. I think it, that's super, yeah, that's wonderful because um, I'm sure in one of Mary's interviews, she talks about how putting on clothes is, is a performance, it is like going yeah. on stage. Um, yeah. and, yeah. and I was looking at, um, I was kind of delving a bit more into Sue Tompkins' work mm-hmm. and, and she talks about how um, clothes, um, well, sort of like her work, sorry, her, her sculptures rather, are an absurd kind of theatre in her words. And then I think yeah. I see how, yeah, what you've just kind of summed up there, this idea of putting on um, 
Well, I think, think the jumper you want to wear that day. Um, I think we all do that. I just touched on it earlier. I mean, you do tapping into the right thing and making you feel ready for that day and connecting with yourself is a big part of everything. And I think if we find um, just the right thing to wear on that day, I think it's just it just it just is it brings everything together in a beautiful uh, um, um, point. And and, and it's. I think what we've always tried to do within our collections is edit it down as well to those key pieces. So say it's mm -hmm. the sweater, yeah. um, you know, be it the, 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 the rather fantastic Shetland hardy knit mm -hmm. into something yes. beautiful that is practical and gorgeous, uh, as well as the beautiful um, trench coat um, that will last your lifetime and can be turned inside out, worn in all different ways, in different styles. Um, you know, the way one styles oneself, the way you put it together, style is obviously another thing that we were yeah. discussing together when we met. Um, yeah. What, just looking yeah. at these photographs here, that these were all taken at, um, obviously we love to contextualize our uh, yeah. clothing as best we can. These were taken in, um, uh, in the Maison du Brazil, Brazil it's a yeah. Coupetier building in, Paris, mm. which is um, actually a rather fantastic cause of residence uh, mm. in the 14th arrondissement in Paris. Gosh, and incredible. we've always adored uh, Corbusier, as I imagine everybody does. <laughs> so, um, but it was quite um, surprising to us how much our clothes mirrored his use of colour and architecture. So it was quite a surprise when we photographed, uh, we were able to very, very Sweetly, the foundation Corbusier allowed us to photograph uh, with uh, Sonia Sieffa, another friend of ours who, who took the, these images, on Audrey oh, Marnie, another fetish model who we've adored um, uh, in the 90s. She was a great friend model. Um, it how it all came together in these mm -hmm. moments. So just contextualizing it, finding those uh, mm -hmm. wonderful opportunities when you can. Uh, you know, photograph your favorite clothes when in your favorite environment is just, yeah. it's just a great, it's a great thing. Yeah. I think it, for me as well, it's that kind of conflict, that kind of contrast between the kind of nature and, and um, the sculptural quality of both the clothing and the con context, the building itself. Um, and in the brutalist kind of architecture, it's always quite. Um, yeah, yeah. No, it's all, I've always found it very appealing. And yeah. Um, um, yes, it's, it's, and it is obviously it's what we work, as I was saying, a little bit subconsciously, isn't it? Yeah. You sort of when someone reading what these influences are there, and you don't know how yeah. they come out. But it's uh, it's I guess that's just des design, isn't it? Really? You, yeah. Just, yes. you don't know where things come from, and I, we do. Yeah, Aurel and I love to draw a lot, so we draw yes. uh, a great deal um, of, of. We've been lucky enough to share those drawings on Instagram and social media recently uh -huh. which has been really nice and um but it's 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 people don't draw much as much these days uh, and it's, it's it's just something we always do and I always feel that sort of resonates within our, our drawings our, our, our design work uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. no it's really it's really interesting and um, like clothes are sculpturing the body and sometimes the kind of softness against the kind of very sharp cuts and yeah. yeah, absolutely. I wanted to, um, you've mentioned it already how you work with Shetland knitters, um, but also um, manufacturing in Scottish, how you work quite closely with Scottish traditional textile industries. Um, you've worked with Dee Galpin before, I'm sure. And, and yeah, we've worked with, with, and, with Di, Di Gilpin, who uh, works Galpin. in, um, she's in, uh, in Fife. Yes. And, um, right. Yeah, when I, um, when I, I decided I didn't want to travel anymore to Paris because I travelled for 20 years to work with Sonia Kiel previously and um, I think one can only do so much of that and um, that was really the reason to start La Fetiche, uh, mm -hmm. with um, Aurelie was that we could um, make, uh, create something that was a little bit more home-based and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. working with artists, uh, um, designers, artisans and manufacturers that were had a more uh, local appeal. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, having sort of moved back and I was just trying to find out, reconnect with Scotland and uh, mm. came across 
Di Gilpin, who was um, just just wonderful knitter and uh, was so inspired by her, uh, the way she creates, uh, has always worked with wool. And um, so I went to meet her and we got talking and just just found so so many common interests and and uh, it just became again a very natural language and just ex- started making mm. uh, sweaters together. I think there was a, mm. a small project I was thinking about. Um, this House of Voltaire, there's a wonderful gallery in uh, uh, London had asked me to do a, a project with um, an artist and I asked Nicholas Party to to, to, oh, to make nice. a, an intarsi knit with him and um, I loved the, her uh, love of the Gansty knits, the traditional Gansty knits of knitting made in the round. I thought that was mm-hmm, fantastic. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it just sparked off all these wonderful ideas of what you could do with it. And I just thought there was something so truly pure and lovely and inspiring about creating something, a wool that's come from a, a farm not far away and, you know, and all the, those years of history and making them and recreating them in something really new and exciting. I thought that was just something that I, as a, you know, um, yeah. uh, um, as a designer and also as just somebody who likes to wear interesting things that I thought was really appealing. I thought it was uh, um, oh. something, something to do with that. And, um, and also the, the coat maker, um, mm. Hancock, they um, have just such a wonderful way of making things by hand you know which is just extraordinary I just love that you know anything that anybody's sort of lovingly made you know mm. it's it was uh it's, it's I just think that's just a wonderful thing and I've, I've always particularly loved a great coat I think it's just it's mm. a wonderful thing to have you know it, it's just Too many coats you know <laughs> covers all sins <laughs> it just makes you you know, sometimes there's just nothing better than having a fantastic yeah. piece yeah. of uh, outerwear um, that makes you feel great and mm. that you can style in different ways and we've always enjoyed the the technicality of it as well and how they're made and these cover seams that they hand sort of glue onto the anything that's stitched is covered by something um this mm. tape and I just thought the graphicness of it was mm. also so beautiful and it's to really celebrate that and make it look really like a drawing you know was, was such a great thing and um so we ended up making them reversible and um, then celebrating it by bringing in bits of the, you know, back we had that season and um, just really having Maybe. fun with the, with the creation of the garment, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Is this one of the, this is a reverse, this is different. Now, this, this is, is a, um, a great shoot that we did for Spring Summer 20. The collection has oh. just, just been done. And this okay. was um, absolutely great uh, mm. building. It's, um, yeah. I mean, it was, it, it was almost like made for our, for our yeah. brand, really. The colours and the floors are so vibrant. It's it's really beautiful. Mm-hmm. And um, it's in Paris, and it's actually a uh, for, it's a cancer research yes. uh, university. And so there were lots of people wandering around in fantastic white lab coats, which added to the whole kind of bizarreness of the situation. It was great. It was like some mm-hmm. sort of crazy... 60s uh, Stanley Kubrick sort of film. <laughs> it was but we did this yeah. shoot with Maeve Marshall. Who, like a uh, film got, set. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. And the light was beautiful. Again, Sonia CF took the pictures. Uh, but this is a, a great jacket um, that's um, become one of our permanent pieces. We, again, we like to have lots of permanent pieces in our collection. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't feel we like to sort of recreate everything every season, you know. So this is a jacket made from recycled um, bandana, American bandana, um, yeah. uh, which we've all loved, these, uh, the colours and the also the authentic classicness to them and sort of, again, remaking them, patchwork them and um, uh, then lined it with some beautiful Japanese cotton and linen fabric. So, again, you can flip it and reverse it in um, um, two ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah but also coziness of, of it is. Oh, it's, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's, it's, it's lust worthy. <laughs> um, yeah. It's good. Um, but it's that idea of slow fashion, yeah, sustainability, but really um, the crafts, the 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 craftspersonship behind each piece and the yeah. storytelling. Yes, everything definitely has a um, a good a good soul and intent to it, and yeah. Yeah. we don't keep it if we if in the collection if we don't feel it's. Um, hasn't got that yeah uh-huh. um obviously we could design 100 million things but yeah. it's just like, <laughs> the difficult bit is editing and making sure but it just it actually does happen very very um 
uh, naturally and actually quite instinctively between mm. um, Orly and I, even though we are mm. in two separate cities. Yeah, just um, we sort of have a chat at the beginning of the season as to what we're thinking and we'll pick up right. on a colour or a mood or something and then it just translates very naturally really into um, yeah, I find that interesting that that was one of your motivations as well for setting up La Fetiche after, you know, working in high profile fashion for for year for a few years. Yeah. And then but but I suppose what are what do you think are the challenges then navigating the kind of contemporary fashion world right now? I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean obviously so. we're going through a crazy time. This, yes, this moment, we are. But, Very much um, so. And it's um it's been uh I think when we set us up in or, um, 17 2017 there was we were kind of kind of feeling like we wanted to have a change in the way we worked anyway I think mm-hmm. um, there was a sort of feeling of non-stop kind of treadmill of functionality to keep 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 on keep on keep on product 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 yeah and I think it was I lost touch of myself a bit and uh, yeah you know you could, there's only so many things you can do and and, and people you can listen to and and also the travel and um, also family life and being displaced. And I didn't feel I was doing anything terribly well. So I think that being brave and thinking, well, maybe just need to reconsider things and have a think about how mm. I might do things a bit better and get a bit more pleasure out of it, which is hard, very hard. And you do have to reevaluate lots of things and mm. um think through going through bad times you come out the end of it and you see things you know better in the end of it but um it's that was the reason why we wanted to do La Petiche we love fashion but we wanted to do it better you know so we wanted to create things that we love and as I said sort of edit it down to sort of these key pieces that we felt were um made it inspiring and easier to and to have fun with really and yeah. for, for clients and to also share that story base about where things were made and how yeah. they were made and, and why and uh, the artists that we're working with and yeah. the architecture we love and you know the photographers we love and and, yeah. and the, why the graphics and you know it's uh, I think it's just it was a moment of being you know trying to make it more creative a creative endeavor rather mm-hmm. than mm-hmm. product based you know uh, and, um, so that's why I went to art school that's why I went to <laughs> That's why we do it, you know, that's why um, we do these things. You know, you've got to follow your instincts and your gut, I think. Mm-hmm. I love yeah, that. about anything, really. Yeah, punk and yeah, the ethos. It's, it's and I think that's so something, I think that's something that you share, uh, that Mary Quant uh, yeah. definitely um, embodies. Um, that's what you feel, and I think that's what I love so much about it, and I think mm-hmm. uh, people do, you know, you mm-hmm. can't fake it, you know. No. Do, feel it and it does I just do come back to that you know if you don't have a feeling about something it's not worth it you know and, um it's hard you know everything's yeah. hard but yeah. generally well, it, is, it does come like come back to the end you know if it's if you haven't gone through a bit of difficulty it's not generally yeah. worth it you know okay. it is um that's what actually Sonia Raquel used to always say she said right. you know it's like giving birth every season you know <laughs> you basically have to go through the hardship do come through at the end of it with something that's rather beautiful mm. you know so um you just have to remind yourself that uh, it, 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 it it's 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 all great yeah it's all good yeah and, and I, I suppose um do you think this kind of having a community of creatives and and embracing it as creative process has that made you a bit more resilient um over these past few months um uh do you feel you know being able to um yeah draw sorry does that sound better i think it's um yeah i i suppose it's thinking about resilience and thinking about creativity and approaching um the challenges of facing fashion right now yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, think it has yeah i mean interesting to think about local also keeping it local and 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 your supply chains I suppose in a more practical sense as well um having having those personal relationships at the heart of what you do yeah Yeah. I think that's more so yeah made it even more important for us and and um we uh are quite resourceful I think in the way we sort of you know having talked 
we discussed before about this mm-hmm. DIY ethos. I yes, think that exactly. That's been even more so uh, important to us. And going back to the roots, really, of mm-hmm. really enjoying making things. And yeah. um, I haven't made anything, well, <laughs> probably for a while, but uh, um, what we were, Aurelie and I decided that we should maybe, or it would be fun to. Uh, reuse some of the stock that we had um, Mm -hmm. to to do other things and it's sort of things that we used to do as kids Um, Mm -hmm. you know there was always that thing that designer piece you were lusting after that uh, you couldn't afford so you sort of made your own version Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. I think that um, uh, there were sort of shapes that we'd done previously that we wanted to sort of recreate so for example we had a a tight little um, gorgeous felted rugby top that we uh, had in a previous collection and I basically cut it up and made it into a giant size one so um, I think it's in the is it this one Corbusier image yeah Yeah, it's that one yeah yeah this one's a little tight fitting thing so we've Gorgeous. cut it up and striped it using other okay. old fabrics that we had remnants mm-hmm. of and mm-hmm. just been you know kind of had a bit of fun in the studio and made something oh, yeah. something else so that was really great and I think doing things and making things is yeah. just makes you think in a different way you know yeah um, even though when we are drawing we're literally making it in our heads because you're drawing every single scene you know yeah. <laughs> thinking you've had it every step of the way but when you're making things I think there's another even better co- connection to the garment and mm. you know, trying it on and then thinking oh I want this and that and that's been really fun uh, doing that and having uh, the time maybe a bit more time to do that than I would normally yeah yeah, so was, yeah also re- reappraising how we want to communicate well, that's, to that's it yeah it, what do you think will stick uh, yeah. yeah I think that's definitely been really great uh, mm-hmm. communicating more on social media I mean mm-hmm. I I sort of have a love-hate with social media it's not mm-hmm. something I really adore but I just feel that being able to show what we're thinking and feeling in regards to Lafferty has been you know a real lifesaver I think this is a really fantastic time for for people with you know creative individuals with an idea you know to be able to uh, sort of, uh, in touch with a, a, a wider based community or like-minded is just a fantastic facility you know, it really is um, so that, and then yes, yes. Uh, obviously we have a very real need to sell. So we have to yep. sell rather than being in showrooms, which we would usually go to Paris yep. and do and meet with clients. Yes. We're yep. doing for the first time for our spring summer 21 collection, we'll be doing virtually. Right. So fingers crossed it will yeah. work out. Uh, but we've been, you know, we've made videos and we've made yeah. uh, beautiful um uh, 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 line sheets when we've expressed uh, and sent out sort of fabric mm-hmm. uh, sheets of, of, of swatches and so we've, we've we've done a great job in thinking around creatively how that might mm-hmm. be, be fun for the buyers just seeing connect with the, the pieces because obviously it's it's about touching the garment ultimately and if we can't do that we have to just think a bit more outside the box as to how we can make it exciting for them no absolutely and I hope this isn't putting you on the spot I just have one uh, look you have some beautiful garments right behind you yes if you could pick one out and maybe yeah through it um, yeah (laughs) Um, because they're just um it is about also that the the texture is the 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 very intricate knits and the idiosyncratic yeah. knits often um this is from our current autumn winter collection and it's a hand knit and um Di Gilpin has created the the cat from um Joanne Tatum yes I've got an the image of that sculpture. so they very kindly let us use and appropriate the piece <laughs> uh, with with the text mm-hmm. um, that we've printed onto very simple calico uh, um, uh, badges. And the uh, this was the title for the show that they did in Glasgow and uh, a petition for an inquiry into the condition of anxiety. And I just thought that was a really fantastic, yeah. um, I don't know, uh, uh, mm-hmm. Say without that, and we really uh, love that idea. And so we've yeah. patched it together. We patched 
the um, a square of nicks. So I always loved these samples that um, the hand knitters do for us. So they've sort of patched them on lovely, beautifully naively. And then this, the shape is based on a traditional sailor's uh, Gansey yeah. knit. It's, it's a navy, sorry, it's very hard to see, but it's a, a very traditional knit that, uh, mm -hmm. that um, dyes always made. And we always love to highlight the, the contrast, sort of gussets underneath, which I think are absolutely The, the construction well. behind it, yeah, yeah. and, and bring the attention to that. And contrast, mm -hmm. contrast, uh, 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 highlighting the, the hand sewing mm -hmm. up. Of, of the of the of the side seams um, and then another and that that quote it really makes me think again about feeling and clothes and yes. how clothes make you feel again tying back to that this is another giant uh, hand knit that we did <laughs> because we just simply loved the color we had some um extra bits of of, of yarn in the studio and so we said, oh, we do a cuff in one colour, you know, sleeve in another, the back in another. And oh, wow, wow. Yeah, this, this yeah. is fantastic. Um, yeah. Again, a big dancey uh, shape. Yeah, so, so in terms of fat, it's like sustainability and thinking about salvage and 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 um, yeah. using yeah, is that something that motivates you as well yeah. ongoing? Definitely, yeah. I think mm -hmm. it's it's something that's really important to us. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's. Uh, uh, really important that we all consider where our clothes come from and mm -hmm. um, how they're made. Um, um, not to be uh, too elitist about it, but I just think it's, uh, I uh, feel that obviously we're at the high end of it. It's, they're expensive pieces, but if, you know, I have the feeling that if you can invest in one good thing rather than buying, uh -huh. uh, you know, an outfit to go out for a weekend in is, is a far better thing, uh, you know. Because you're based on the principle of a capsule wardrobe and, and this idea that, you know, you're letting these clothes into your life and they're they're very much part of, you know, they're to be treasured. Um, Absolutely. Right. I've had, I have clothes in my, yeah. you know, wardrobe that I've had since I was like, you know, 17. And yeah. it's, it's, and it's, I only, you know, when I was looking, I mean, obviously I've tons of clothes, but I just need to really organise that. But they, they are really, I'm very sentimentally attached to them. It's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. To, to, I feel to um, uh, to love them and to treasure them, you know, mm -hmm. and I give them to my kids as well and they, they wear them. I absolutely love that idea. Um, rather than, uh, but then it, equally it can be something I found at a jumble sale that has, yeah. you know, great connection to it. Um, but I think as a designer and sort of taking that idea and, and, and tailoring it and making it, as beautiful as we possibly can is mm -hmm. is what I hope to do as as best you know in the best way possible really. Um, yeah. That's I think um, that um, brings us quite swiftly onto some questions. We've got quite a few building up. Gosh, there. time has run away. Time has <laughs> run away. We've got about eight to ten minutes to just answer some okay. of the questions that have come in. Um, okay. I think just kind of leading on from the discussion about sustainability, uh, we've got a yeah. question um, from who's it from. Moira, who has said, thanks for such an interesting presentation. I love what you're all wearing. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dressing for the day has really come to the fore with the ongoing pandemic. Um, yep. It can really buoy the spirits or yeah. be comforting. Do you have any Definitely. ideas or suggestions on how to refresh or bring to life wardrobes on a budget? Yeah. Yeah. I and think also kind of just got a secondary question that follows that up. Yeah. Coming together, which is from Jen, which is kind of what is your advice for designers and graduates who are trying to have um, a more ethical and sustainable approach to finding their big break in the fashion industry. I feel like those two, two kind of work together. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm. I, I've always. I adore vintage shops. I mean, in Scotland, you get fantastic vintage shops, and they're always really well, well um, uh, edited and um, merchandised. I think that is. I mean, obviously, I'm sure it's an obvious one, but chat shops, and you know, get your sewing machine out. Um, I think we are, as a nation, the British, extremely resourceful and we can make it happen. If the wills, if you've got a will, you, you'll find a way, you know, definitely. It is really, just enjoy it. Enjoy yourself and have fun with it, you know, really. It is just, you'll make a few blunders. I'm sure I've made, I've worn crazy jumpers on my legs before and looked absolutely ridiculous. But it's, it's you just got to have fun, you know, really just don't take life too seriously. The way you express yourself, I think you can just 
go for it, really, absolutely. For me, it helps me feel better. If I am feeling a bit low, I put on a pink jumper and things suddenly feel a bit better. You know, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. And we have a, a number of grey days, don't we, in early mm. January in Scotland. We just think, oh, oh my God. Colour, colour, colour. <laughs> think, um, actually, Jennifer just thinking about colour... We've got another question saying, oh, um, just asking some more about the vibrant use of colour and the graphic pattern mm-hmm. um, and how layers, how that's kind of layered with importance of locality in terms, uh, in your work, in terms of production, and traditional ideas of Scottish style. Oh, that's, that's coming from Catriona. That's a great question. I think, I think yeah. colour's just always been um, a really, just something, I don't know why, it just makes... I think it's it's a very personal level. It makes me, uh, I've always needed it in my life. It mm-hmm. really is fundamental. Um, it's, I don't know why, I think you probably need a psychologist to work that yeah. <laughs> it, It's It's uh, obviously things that I've loved and appealed to me. And I think I was, you know, a kid growing up where sort of late 60s, 70s was a great, part of my sort of aesthetic world and influences and I think that was always very appealing yeah those um you know fabulous posters and comics and things things that really just you know inspire you and think you think of you know more fantastical things different things you know takes you out of the ordinary world I think it's really do you create a set of kind of rules almost for your gra- your palette for each collection or or does it come from the drawing and the sketching and the doodling that, um that I've always just had a very certain color palette I mean mm-hmm. I don't know yeah. I mean you look at things that I've done as a kid and it's always mm-hmm. been the same thing I think it's just yeah. the think. neon beam oh, you like. amazing. um you just it just is I mean I, I find that hard to try and decipher but it's yeah. never I, it's for me I think design my world has always been very instinctive and it really yeah. it, 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 if I try to decipher it it just it just goes mm-hmm. wrong um I'm not good at uh being so very break the rules people. don't follow the rules I'm not good at being conceptual at all yeah. it's um it's just something that happens you know and I think you being receptive to that and connecting with it is the thing yeah. uh uh and going with your gut you know yeah, you've got to just do if you don't have any feeling or connection to it there's no point in pushing it it's not going to go anywhere mm-hmm. you just got to really just do I love this do I need it this is great let's do this it's you know editing editing clear it you know just just keep looking at yourself and obviously then that that's the lovely creative part of it the other side of business has been a bit more challenging Mm-hmm. learning how to do business but that yeah. is um something you can ask people who are more professional and knowledgeable than you <laughs> <laughs> I think um just kind of neatly following on for that we've got a question about kind of um you seem to have worked with several artists Martin Boyce how mm-hmm. do you kind of decide who to collaborate with or where do you usually kind of find first discover their practices Mm-hmm. yeah it, well again as it's just sort of community based really it's 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 not something it's just people that we we know and love and um it, either in paris or or in, in, in scotland so it's 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 not something that i will research heavily it will feel right at the time and um and you know whatever conversations we've had recently or you yeah. know it might be a little bit more on the local view the less traveling but at the moment but yeah whatever seems right at the time so it's it's uh, again you know community mm-hmm. orientated I'd say yeah. I think we have very, time for just one final question artists around so we're very very lucky yeah I think we have time for just That's... one question one last question which mm. is what was the trigger for launching your own line and did Quant's ethos inspire you in any way it's a nice question to end on yes I think I think um I think Mary Quant's um sort of her enthusiasm her sort of energy has always been a huge uh uh fantastic uh inspiration um, um but I our, our desire to create something was um, was was I guess just a response as I touched on earlier about just wanting to do things and be uh, free creatively to do it in our way. Um, I think that was the the biggest yeah. drive. Um, 
to be quite specific and creatively in control of every aspect mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. business. Um, and the way it was put together, the way it was shot, the way it was communicated, the way even the business developed. So that was the initial drive, yeah. Um, I mean, my main thought is that Mary, as she could have done, would have done the same as you. Um, if she could have done, gone at her own, if she had technology, if she had the internet, if she had social media, if she had... Yeah. Um, you know, I imagine she wouldn't have had to work with the, um, or she might have, uh, maybe that's unfair. Maybe she loved working in that world and she was incredibly revolutionary and revolutionized the big industry and um, yeah. big, the men big in big wigs, as she calls them and things like yeah. that. But, but I wonder if she might have followed suit and set off on her own, like yourself. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, who will know, but she was certainly had a, I mean, this is the impression I get from, from reading about her, but this um, this will and this desire and this determination to do things her way in her, in her vision, you know, and I think that's something we all need to keep in the foremost of our minds is, is to be true to yourself, you know, to always listen to yourself and to do it in the way you feel is yeah. the right way, even though people tell you not to and it's not a good idea you just need to keep going keep going past fear with everything you know it's it's hard but it's worth it yeah yeah that's awesome yeah that's a great mantra (laughs) yeah no it always there's always difficult moments I always try and remind myself you know it's always a moment which you think what am I doing but then you come out the end of it and it's just you see the you know light at the end of the tunnel and it all comes together and it's just great you know Mm-hmm. And then you're able to share that with everybody and people then enjoy wearing your clothes, which is what it's all about. You know, it's yeah. great bringing sort of joy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's all you have to do. It's wonderful. Well, oh, I think I've... that kind of neatly brings us to the end. Oh, I've really enjoyed this chat. Really, again. Oh, it's great. Good. So interesting to... It's been well, a lovely sorry, to You couldn't be here with Orly. Orly sends her love, her French love. Oh, oh, he's sorry, here she didn't join in, in spirit, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, we weren't. We didn't have enough time to answer everyone's questions. There were a few more, so I can, I'm just okay. going to apologise for not being able to answer them all. Um, but I am trying to wrap us up on time because um, obviously it's lunchtime well maybe we could sure. do it over oh, well I'm go. putting April up for it but maybe we could do a little yeah. email answer yeah. um, <laughs> and if uh, we would welcome any feedback in the chat if anyone has any feedback on how they think the talk went um, anything they'd like the panellists to know any nice comments go yes for it. please <laughs> I would love nice comments um, and yeah I think I think that's kind of the end for us um, if you guys want to just turn your videos off okay. um, we will call it a day <laughs> Thank you. Well, Thanks thank everyone you so for coming. Much for joining. I really Bye. 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 Bye everyone.